seething players. Dumbest reason why someone raged and was upset in one of your games. Be me, paladin, typical lawful good character. That explains it. <laughs> Were you actually lawful good? <laughs> Were you? Were you? Okay, sure. Be other guy, some noble woman fighter. First few sessions we roleplay well together and things seem to be going fine. Our characters get along particularly well because she's a noble obliged type character. Town we're staying in gets suddenly raided by Cambians while party was out. Place is burning. People are dead. Some have taken as slaves. Mare's daughter is gacked. He's crying on the floor. Party wants to give chase immediately, but Fighter wants to negotiate payment first. My character chastises her. Basically something like, How can you be discussing payment at a time like this? We need to go help those people now. I'm disappointed, Fighter. My character shakes his head and starts heading towards the direction of the raiders. Party follows. We take a five minute break. After we come back, Fighter suddenly goes, Okay, before we go. Do you understand my character is doing what she does so we're better prepared for the next fight? Huh? <laughs> Money though. Money. I'm saying this because you shit in my character. What? Mate, I didn't mean anything by it or intended that my character just has different in-character priorities. Okay, but you didn't need to do that. DM has to step in and calm him down, saying he thinks I wasn't trying to be rude or anything. He finally shuts up and we get to move on. For the rest of his campaign, he just keeps trying to start fights with me or arguing any chance he gets. I suggest a plan. He calls it stupid. I compliment the female NPC noble lady during a meeting. Starts throwing implications I'm a simp. From the person playing a female character. Exactly. <laughs> My roles are going poorly. Calls me useless. Okay, I do that. I do call people useless. Yeah. <laughs> Their rules are terrible. I get tired of this shit, and in one pretty lethal coven hag fight, I decide not to heal him, and instead focus on killing the hags. He dies. Hear a loud, thundering table slam, and glass breaking before he leaves the discord without saying anything. I should have healed him, but whatever. He was being a dick. Yeah, honestly, like, you know, like, this is one, this is one of those things that's hard with roleplay. It's disconnecting yourself from, from the, the character. character. And um, that, that, like, that is something that's very difficult. But at the same time, you know, like, you play a noble character. I don't, I don't see an issue with, like, just going and getting the job done. You're going to get paid for this type of job. Yeah. Like, it's not like a job where they're going to turn around and be and like... And, like, if you don't make chase, you will lose them. Lose them. So yeah, you don't you have, have time. to go quickly. You can go, always go back. Yeah, you don't you really know. have time for this sort of thing. I don't know. I don't know. I've never really... Have you, any of you guys actually came across someone that just sees? I I don't think I've ever came across people in this category. Well, no, that's telling me that. I've came across one. But he was just a bit weird on it, and like you know, he kind of like you know, you know when you meet someone and you know that they're a wee bit spurgy, so you don't like take anything from them. Yeah, you know you what I mean. Whenever I met you. Oh, right. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let's just jump into this thread, will we? They walked into a pitch black room where the floor was covered in bones. No checking. No slow roll. No tossing a light in. Just walked right in, and then they died from an ambush. And got mad and quit the game. Like, that's on them. <laughs> Look, all I'm saying is... <laughs> like, you, you guys did, did, the <laughs> did the DM describe it was a pitch black room? <laughs> uh, all I'm saying is you guys definitely don't use 10-foot poles in yeah. your games, okay? You should Just, always have one. You should use a 10-foot pole. And I think it's mandatory for 5e players to play Tim of Horrors at least once. All right? And that's all I'm going to say. Because, like, you know, like, sometimes... Like, you gotta get a feel for your DM. And some DMs are a bit ruthless. Some DMs are like that. But, you know, eh? It's yeah. Not, it's, it's, like, it's not the end. You know, this is, a, this is the biggest divide I think there is with new players and older players. Whenever their player dies, it's like the biggest deal ever. And they get really upset and mm -hmm. I don't think they can handle it very well. Yeah. Like a player death. It's just something that happens. Yeah. And it is a game. So, yeah. you know, like, don't... People don't, die. Don't worry about it too much. Just roll a new character. You'll be fine. I get it's a bit disappointing. But, look, you know, did you die, though? Like, IRL? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> when I DM'd, I introduced a magical field that made one player bind, one deaf, and one mute. The player who was made blind was pissed that he couldn't dodge an arrow trap because he couldn't see. He also failed checks to hear the trap. He didn't take much damage or anything, but some reason he got very angry and stormed off. It took about a week to get him to talk to me again, and to this day, I have no idea why he got so angry. If you're wondering like I did, he had no blind family members or friends either, so that wasn't it. <laughs> I like the way that's what people have to think, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, was he just blind? Like, was this a see no evil, hear no evil monkey? Yeah, that's what I would put down to it. And like, you know, like, if you one person does this, can you... I would think of this as like a weird... Is it permanent? No, it's, it's magical field. It's a magical field, so, so it's, it's not permanent, so like... 
Calm down. And I, like, he didn't even take out much damage. Yeah, exactly. He didn't die or anything. So, again, look, I think what this is, this is like a puzzle situation yeah. where it's like, okay, one of you is off to be the eyes, one of you is off to hear. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a bit of a, like, a bit of teamwork, you know? What's what's this all about? A bit of teamwork, yeah? I don't know. I just couldn't be arsed for that type of thing. If I be honest with you, I'd be like, man, just, you go sort yourself out, okay? Be me. Chronic tarred player wrangler and train conductor. <laughs> Keeping the plot moving along the rails for the GM. Oh, right, okay, now right. I get it, now I get it. I thought, like, <laughs> it's like, what is this? I know, like, boys with a tism tend to, really, like, trains. trains yeah. <laughs> also, always forsaking my own funds so other players can avoid consequences for party, while showcasing how colourful they are. Means I'm playing stress because I'm trying to keep everyone alive or out of trouble or in a moving game, while rarely getting to do roleplay myself. Make a meme character for a one shot, and the only vaguely competent and sensible PC ends up being the sidekick, while my PC takes over as the eccentric party leader. Speaks entirely in that accent and tone as well. It's got a what many blanks, what's, what's the say. video? Dr. B's guitars. Okay, well, that's absolutely fucking annoying. Yeah. So, uh... so, I can get why people may be. Annoyed at you. <laughs> well, do the voice, Dr. B. Okay, no, I, please, please don't. One shot becomes a two shot, nearly three shot, because without my wrangling, the other two tardy players go off and immediately derail the entire module. I roleplay with them, but make no efforts to encourage or dissuade them this conduct. Game only avoids becoming a three shot at least, because every player came together out of session and agreed to try and keep it together to get through the module. Sensible PC player goes from having this cool Asimar rogue character <laughs> Cool Asimar rogue? <laughs> okay. To tar wrangling. Refer to his female character as B-Boy one too many times. And he in character flips his shit at me. Refuses to not refer to his PC as B-Boy or even acknowledge the outburst as anything more than some silliness. I mean, this guy was the talk of the group for a good while. Everyone loved him, except the temporary grip wrangler. I have no idea what on earth happened in this Neither story. Neither do I. One bit. This this makes absolutely no sense. Okay, so um, DM is complaining that he doesn't get to role play much. So, many so he makes it. So he makes a DM player character, and then the the person that's most interested in role playing becomes yeah. their sidekick. <laughs> uh, I don't know. This thing, this sounds like a bit of a twin. And then B boy. And then B B's boy become or Doctor B's boy. Like guys, I just don't get this. I one. don't get I, it. I, I, you know, and I kill Asmar Rogue just does not go well together. Okay, them. That's like the word chicken and fact. Like, <laughs> some words just whatever you put them together, they should not, not exist. Totally Can you guys give me any other like? words that just shouldn't exist like chicken and factory you know or, or any animal and factory you know it just doesn't work come like, and jar yeah come and jar they, they, they shouldn't be put together no. or uh, sex and mother you know that yeah. type, you know that's a big shit if you guys have any of your own ideas let us know one time my exalted group one time at bank <laughs> one time you guys should go watch LARP Cam. LARP Cam's a great video series by the way one time my exalted group invited someone new into the game that pitched a fit before he even finished making his character he wanted to play a character whose whole deal was explosives which doesn't quite work out when the setting doesn't have gunpowder we tried telling him that there's something kind of similar called fire dust which doesn't explode but bursts into flames when sparked even told him he could have a fire wand which is essentially a musket that shoots out gouts of flame when fired. Kind of like a flame floor. Flame floor. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't have it. The guy went on an absolute bitch fest in the Discord about how stupid it is that gunpowder isn't a thing in the game's setting and accused the GM of making shit up to not let him play what he wants to play. It was really out of nowhere and nothing we tried to suggest for alternatives worked. He just went full sour grapes and found out later that the reason he was pissed off so bad was because prior to this, he made a character for a pony fallout game. What? Again, words that should not go together. <laughs> yes, uh, pony, pony fallout, fallout game. <laughs> <laughs> He made a uh, character for a pony fallout game that died before he could play. What do you, oh, the game died? Uh, I thought yeah. you meant like his character. <laughs> well, that's a good thing, yeah. I'm, I'm going to argue. This was his attempt to play the same character in another setting, and he was already mad he had to make his character human and not a pony. So I guess he lost his shit because he'd have to make even more changes. He got kicked, and we found someone else. Nice for him to show us up front that he was shit at least. <laughs> well, that's good, you know. <laughs> yeah, at least you knew that before you started playing. First of all, what was what was his Discord profile picture? Pony. 
My Little Pony. That, that that's all you need to know before it's right, like, yeah. you know what? I'm uh, I'm sorry, man. Um, I don't think this I don't think this game's for you. Yeah. What is it? That, that, okay, on a different note though, what is it about people with gunpowder that just go really into it? Like people go like I don't. First of all, most games. Let's be serious. When it comes to te- technology, most of them are set in like the 1700s anyway. Yeah. So I don't really see that bit. Like most high fantasy settings, I think gunpowder doesn't doesn't change anything. No. So if you want to have it, I think that's fine. Um, well, it's, once it all comes down to the deal. <laughs> like, but, but let's be serious. Most players do play high fantasy. It's like no, no, guys, this is a good fantasy. Trust me, guys. Trust me. It's like, is it? Is it really? Okay, sure. Whatever you have to say about it. Right, you slimy, huey maggots. We has been working hard at Neckbeardia to get the bestest little people that monies can buy. We got all the boys here. We got the boys, the lizard boys, uh, vampire boys, all the boys over at Neckbeardia. Oh, we also got some pretty girls too. <laughs> <laughs> But I can't really make out which one's the boys and which one's the girls sometimes. <laughs> but oh, anyway, I need more money to get more darker, so get on over and order some now, you filthy pigs. Every video that we post, we're going to be giving away all of our homebrew content to one lucky winner. Every video. All you have to do to be in with a chance to win is to be subscribed, leave a comment and like this video. And today's lucky winner is this guy. Well done! Well done! To claim your prize, just send an email to neckbeardiacontact at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the video. A lot of dumbass paladin murder hobo tales. Not much else. The most ridiculous one in my opinion was the time that I advertised a neutral evil campaign. Banned paladins as a class, banned all of the good alignments, and this guy plays a lawful neutral cavalier and proceeds to kill a party member for stealing. I talked to my players ahead of time, explained that they would be criminals and mercenaries, and still there was a paladin player just waiting to slaughter his teammates. This is like, is this like reverse land, where instead of... What's going on here? It's the other way around only. I don't get this. Another paladin tale. This one was the legit lawful good paladin of Peller, who didn't like that one of the party members bribed the mayor to get them out of some hefty criminal charges. So he proceeded to alert the most radical, zealous, murderous organization of inquisitors to town that he could. They initially just kidnapped some of the party's hairling and burned the cute dwarf medic to death for being a heathen. She worshipped Torg. Thing is, they didn't start the fire. He didn't start the, the fire. fire. Oh, they always have shining the... <laughs> since the world's been burning. <laughs> they da, have da, the paladin da, da, PC, da, da, da. the torch. <laughs> they have the palisin, the paladin PC, the torch, and he lit her up. The rest of the party turned hostile to the dumb fucker at that point. But due to the sheer unthinking malice towards heretics and heathens he had, I decided to spirit that paladin away into Peller's realm. He returned later in the campaign as an antagonist despite my hope that he would choose to realise how evil and cruel his god was and abandon the paladin class. Anyway, he was murdered by the PCs the second time around. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. I actually kind of like this guy. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, like, you know, sometimes whenever these things happen, they can be done well. It's just they never are done well. But if it was done well, it would be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But you could say that about literally anything, mm-hmm. any any idea that you have. It's like, well, if it was done well, it would be cool, but yeah. this was done partly, so it's dog shit. Exactly. But this guy's got more stories, so let's keep going. I have one more tale of fucking retarded pal- paladin players. This one's set in Kingsmaker's Mike Cave. The paladin player in this game was yet again the sole PC who picked a good alignment, and he was intent on punishing his fellow party members for all perceived infractions. For the sessions leading up to this cave, he had managed to alienate the entire party from himself, in character and out of character. A man after my own heart. <laughs> so at the bottom of the cave is that cave. It, cave is this <laughs> mega centipede thing and it's in this deep ravine initially. Paladin player gets the bright idea to try a plunging attack into this ravine. He did respectable damage but lost most of his health in the process. The centipede knocked him out the next turn but the party's gunslinger, a neutral evil guy, thinks this is a great opportunity to call a mulligan on this retard. So he shoots the centipede first and eventually it died. Then he turns his musket towards the unconscious paladin. He was at the edge of the cliff leading into the ravine and firing down some 40 foot at the body of the paladin. But he kept missing. Thing is, other PCs were nearby and after the second shot hit plate, 
they figured out what was going on. But they hated the dumb fuck paladin too, so they, <laughs> <laughs> so they feigned being busy cleaning up a couple of mites, allowing the noble gunslinger to finish his job. Though, amusingly, he missed four of his six shots. Why won't you die? <laughs> <laughs> that paladin player raged legendarily from this demanding to make his second character a druid, experiencing visions of the paladin's death and of the complicity of all the party in it, so he could seek revenge. Obviously, this was vetoed, and he never returned to playing. Well, there you go. What is it What is it with... Like, you know, the thing is, I've played paladins an awful lot, and I really enjoy paladins. What is it with the paladins turning into Doom Guy? Yeah. Like, they I think because it... A hellfire and brimstone. It is only, like, the one way to play. You can play them differently, but whenever you think of a paladin, you do think of the Doom Guy. It, like, the thing is, it is... It's zealous, you know? Well, whenever I think of a paladin, I think of Ian Paisley. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I really, well, he would be more of a clerk, maybe. But no one's going to understand who Ian yeah. is, so let's be serious. Like, who would be another example that we could use for like, Americans to understand? I can't think of anyone. that I don't know any religious leaders no. for Americans. No. Definitely not the Pope. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, there is something about paladin players. I like paladins. I think they're a lot of fun. But it's really easy to just do a shit job at them. Yeah. Like, let's be serious. It is. It is really easy. And there's a lot of people that do just do a shit job. Running a three-man party. Me, Rogue a wizard, and a sorcerer, lost in a maze-like dungeon, come across a group of NPC adventurers, seemingly as lost as we are. Wizard decides to murder her with them and opens up with a fireball out of nowhere. Fight breaks out. Sorcerer decides to stop the wizard. Didn't even do anything to the guy. If I can recall, he just grabbed his arm and told him to calm down. Wizard goes apeshit and starts a 10 minute IRL rant on how the sorcerer player is a traitor. Traitor! Vows to break his next game in any way possible. We did rotating DMs back then. Had to end the session right there, with the NPCs looking at our frothing wizard in confusion. The funniest thing is that the sorcerer had whole person ready, so if he wanted to actually stop the wizard, he could have. <laughs> Why? Why do people get so testy? Like that <laughs> yeah, out of game. It really is, though. It, uh, you know what I think it is? I, I've got a, I've got a bit of an idea on this sort of thing, and what I believe it is is people that have very little control in their day to day lives. They really enjoy role playing games because it means that they it gives them complete control over something. And then if someone turns around and says no to them about anything, or like, me, that's, no, let's not do this, it's like, how dare you question my judgment? Mm. Or you know what it leans more into? I think this is one of the biggest problems I've got with like, people that won't ju- people that will only play 5e. And I think one of the reasons for that is nerds, and let's be honest, like, let's be serious, there's a lot of, most, let's be serious, if you're interested in role playing games, you're a bit of a nerd. Yeah, you know, like, that's, yeah. that's, 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 <laughs> that's just, just, that's just, that's just plain fucking, and simple. Like, you know, we enjoy nerdy hobbies, yeah. let's be serious, let's not try and kid ourselves. And, um, you know, I think there's definitely a lot of people that would be in that category, and the idea of them being asked a question and they have no idea how to answer the question kind of terrifies them a wee bit. It's like, well, I may be a loser in most aspects of my life, but at least I've got my brains to work me through this. You know what I mean? It's like, I can't be seen as a retard ever. You know what I mean? And then someone turns around and says, no, that's a stupid idea. That's do- like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Then and then they take it really take it thick. thick. Yeah. You know, I, I. what do you guys think? Is there maybe Good some thing. truth to that? I think there's something to it anyway. PC in a party of three. Illusion wizard, me. Gnome barbarian, other PC. Dark elf rogue assassin, the man in qu- Of course it's the man in question! <laughs> the dark elf rogue assassin. <laughs> We've been doing a number of bad things since the start of the game, like stealing from the church, killing the town guard. Our involvement in the crimes hasn't been equal. I've been fairly happy with intimidating them and moving on. The gnome has been bad, but prefers comical mischief like running around naked or covering himself in oil. Is this a... Is this a fuck? Is this a weird version of Teehee Makuni Makuni? <laughs> is this like from a different perspective? Is this a new cup of coffee pasta? The Dark Elf was a massive murder hobo. Makes our villainy look U-rated. Rob the old man. He breaks his legs and leaves him in the woods. Fight the town guard. He decides to deliver the decapitated guard to his widow. My wizard has, in character, been very vocal about his murder hoboing and has started to question if he is morally responsible for not doing something. So fast forward. We're tracking cultists through the mountain. They've been taking children to sacrifice to a great old one. Get to the cave and beat the cultists before they can sacrifice the group of kids. 
Dark Elf says that he walks up to them. I push one into the pit behind the altar. Immediately, my wizard says enough of this and launches a lightning bolt at his back, saying he can't stand by and let this carry on. Combat starts and he rolls suspiciously well. Hmm, I'm fairly sure you don't have plus nine to hit. Yes, I do. Make it two rounds before he downs me. Goes to slit my throat while I'm down. No barbarian defends me and beats the shit out of him. Feels his death save because the barbarian doesn't want to help him. Start getting mad at me, saying that I tried to kill him and it was completely uncalled for. He goes red in the face from yelling and he leaves. We never see him at our d d group ever again. It does kind of sound like this was out of nowhere though. It did. Or is that just me? Like, I don't know, Like I, I feel like there should be a bit of a build-up before a complete turnaround and just snap. It, like, w- I don't actually see what's that wrong with pushing a cultist into the altar. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, you know, they're, they're gonna be evil guys, so like... They yeah, kidnap like, kids? <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> For like, sacrifice? <laughs> like, um... Uh, I mean, like, you know... <clears throat> it was a wee bit out of nowhere. I, yeah, I honestly, I, I think I'm going to side with this guy, because it just does feel like you, you turned around on him. Yeah, I'm siding with the Dark Elf. <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't expect that at <laughs> yeah. all, to be honest with you guys, but, like, yeah, I don't think there's much else I can put on that. So, yeah, I think that's where we're going to end it. I'm trying to think of any examples for me, personally. So... You know, the only times I think it's ever happened to me, I think it's been kind of justified because I think I'm, I got, I got that away with quite a bit. I feel like, you know, from time to time. So whenever, like, you know, if, if someone turns around to me and says, like, no, that's ridiculous, it's like, all right, okay, sure. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna oh, sit shit, there. And, I'm, yeah, I'm not gonna argue with them if that's what they want. Then it's like, all right, yes. f- yeah, sure. If that's the direction you want to go. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm okay with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm easy going with that. But let us know your experiences down below in the comments. Yeah, if we get enough like, of them, I yeah, really, I want to like do a video. Your experiences. Um, and while you're down there, check out the link to the website. Oh, oh, by the way, guys, we got a seal going at the minute. <laughs> uh, seal 30 at checkout. Uh, it's going to be going on for the rest of the week. And uh, I've done some updates to the website. And there's a lot Ooh. of, like, if you haven't been on, check it out. Because some we've got, nice new models, We've guys? got a ton of new stuff. I mean, Like, really nice ones? Yeah. Go have a look. We're so, checking out. Hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post a video. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh.